Hello, a very good evening to you. The Chelsea captain, John Terry, has been cleared of racially abusing the Queen's Park Rangers player, Anton Ferdinand, during a Premier League match at Loftus Road last October. Yes, the magistrate said there was no doubt that Terry had used racist language, that it was possible the England international had simply been repeating what he believed had been said to him. Dan Rowan reports. After a week-long trial and a ten-month ordeal that had overshadowed everything he did on and off the pitch, John Terry left Westminster Magistrates today for the final time. He'd lost the England captaincy over what he'd been accused of saying, but having cleared his name, the defender is now able to resume his career and let his feet do the talking. It was during this game between Queen's Park Rangers and Chelsea that Terry admitted using the word black and a series of obscenities towards opponent Anton Ferdinand when the pair traded insults. The prosecution claimed Terry had been guilty of straightforward racial abuse, but Terry insisted he'd merely been repeating an accusation he believed Ferdinand had made. And ruling Chief Magistrate Howard Riddle said... I accept that it is possible that Mr. Terry believed at the time and believes now that such an accusation was made. It's therefore possible that what he said was not intended as an insult, but rather as a challenge to what he believed had been said to him. In those circumstances, there being a doubt, the only verdict the court can record is one of not guilty. Throughout the last five days, Terry had remained impassive in the dock and remained so when the verdict was delivered, leaving court without comment. Um, we are pleased that... John can now put his mind to football and go back to training and do what he's done for many years. That's really all I have to say. The epitome of the passionate, uncompromising leader for both club and country, this case had threatened to define Terry's already controversial career. And the result could be the biggest of his life. There will be some players and some fans, many fans, and many areas of the media that will be against John Terry. He's been there. He's done that. He knows that he will just get on with it, but in a personal point of view, I think he's gone through so many things before. This, this is another thing that he will have gone through, but I suspect this may well be the biggest relief that he's ever had. This case was always going to be of huge importance to John Terry's career and reputation, but the ramifications extend well beyond that to the FA and to football at large. Those that have been fighting racism in the sport for years saw this as a landmark case and in the wake of a not guilty verdict believe challenges remain. What is, this has highlighted is the, the re-emergence generally of such, uh, such issues and I think we've got to attack that with the same vigour, with education at grassroots, zero tolerance, application of sanctions when proven beyond reasonable doubt and, and I think it's not helped the game. It's a sorry day. It's a sorry day for football. Make no mistake about that. An unedifying week for football ends with Terry walking away with his reputation intact. But given who he is and what was said that day, the sport may take time to recover. That report from Dan Rowan. Well, Ed Rhodes from the England Supporters Club joins me. Thanks for coming along. Uh, the court case is over, but still a lot of questions, Ed. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, John Terry's been found not guilty, but um, I don't think that a lot of people will think he's entirely innocent. So I'm sure there'll be a lot of um, banter and chance going around at the football grounds that season. I think John Terry, to be honest, and the FA and the fans, the majority of the fans, England fans especially, would be just sort of glad to get this over and done with and, and just um, can't wait for the football season to start again, to be honest. Well, yes, uh, John Terry's defence was simply that he was repeating what he believed had been said to him, but... Um, you know, we got to look, I suppose, at the, the, the general language and the sort of uh, message that that sends out to fans, the sort of example it sets. Uh, it doesn't set the best example at all. It's all over the media. Um, these guys are supposed to be role models, but I think people have to understand as well that they are just guys that have grown up. Not all of them had a great um, upbringing. And they, they do use bad language, and, and it, it goes on on every sort of football park around the um, country on a Saturday afternoon, and it's, it's not a great example, but um, it does happen, I'm afraid. So are you saying that people from this kind of background, who have to be highly disciplined, let's remember, to reach this level in the game of football, can't be disciplined enough to control their language? Um, but it's a good question. I think um, the, the high pressure of the environment. I mean, I watched the game on TV live, and it was um, it was it was a real high pressure game. And people do snap on the pitch. I mean, I, I think I heard John Terry in the trial say that he, he's not snapped on a football pitch before. But anyone who watched the Champions League final saw that he did snap and he got sent off. And these things happen. And, and I think 
you'd hope to think that John Terry would learn from this, but... Well, the, the <laughs> FA is running its respect campaign. You know, you don't get, you don't tend to get this sort of incident happening in other sports as much as you do in football. What more does the FA have to do to try to stamp this out? Well, I guess they could go the way of rugby and, and mic up the refs so everyone can hear what's being said, but I think probably with the, the amount of live football that's on TV that they'd be a little bit wary about doing that, to be honest. But, um, I mean... I guess these high profile cases, are, it's not great for football but it, it does bring up the issues in society and, and gets people talking about it and, and thinking about what the standards should be really. Mm. Uh, on the personal level for John Terry, clearly this pending court case didn't affect his performance at the European Championships. So where does he go from here do you think? I think to be honest he'll just be waiting for the football season to start again. He, he was actually really good at the Euros. Um, it was good actually to see an England team with a bit of team spirit behind them seem to be um, playing for each other. So I bet he just can't wait to get back on the football pitch. That's, that's what he does best basically. Mm, but of course in the meantime he's got the, the matter of uh, possible disciplinary charges from the FA. Mm -hmm. How do you think the FA is going to handle this? Um, I think they'll, they'll try and do it behind closed doors and, and they'll want to sort of um, get as little media attention as possible around it. Uh, I think, to be honest, the whole case should have really been seen during the season and got it over and done with. It's, it's dragged on a, a long time for the players and the fans and supporters and what have you, and, and, and John Terry and Anton Fernand as well. So, um, to be honest, I think everyone will be uh, glad to see the back of it. If it is done in a behind closed doors way, though, that in itself might speak vol volumes about how the FA feels. It's perhaps handling this whole situation of the use of bad language uh, on, on the pitch. Yeah, maybe. I, I mean, they, they want England players, they want football players to, to set a good example. So, um, I mean, you, you don't want these incident, incidents to happen, but as I said, I mean, they, they do happen uh, up and down the country and on the football pitch, so it's um, sometimes difficult to avoid. Okay, Ed Rhodes from the England Supporters Club, thank you thanks. very much. Thanks very much, Cheers. This brings some news that's just come into us out of.